When I recently completed my $174 PC, a lot of people were wondering how I actually managed to get my PC running at 1440p with over 60 FPS in multiplayer titles. Well, today's video is going to be talking about an important thing in PC gaming that I like to call the balancing act. Welcome to Tech City, this is Brian and I'm going to cut straight to the chase here. It's all about balance. When you buy a GPU, always think about the CPU you are going to couple it with, or vice versa for gaming. Now I'm going to be straight up with you guys, I've had a lot of experience building used PCs, especially over the last year, and this has allowed me to go near autopilot mode when it comes to tuning a particular rig. That is knowing what games will work at what settings without having to play around an awful lot. But here are some tips for you guys. If you want to tune your PC properly, first off, optimize your OS. I've got guides for all these all the way from Windows 7 up to the latest anniversary update of Windows 10. After that, I recommend getting a program called MSI Afterburner with Rivertuner statistics installed. This won't just allow you to overclock your GPU, different topic for a different day, but it will also allow you to bring up the on-screen display which will show you statistics like temperatures, memory usage, and more importantly, percentage of your CPU or GPU being used. This is a particularly important one because this is where you're going to start tuning your games to level both the GPU and the CPU to over 90% to near 100% if possible. When you start doing this, then you are fully utilizing the maximum price performance of your PC. Though one thing to keep in mind here is that you will want to start optimizing your games for a smooth experience. And this is just simply playing the game and looking at what is actually coming out on your screen. And this is where it plays an important role with just sitting down, looking at things, and forgetting about an FPS meter and just using your eyes to seeing what's coming out on the screen. If you look at my CSGO settings, for example, you'll notice that I dropped the shadows and shaded detail. This was not only because I wanted to up the frames, but more importantly, I wanted to get rid of stuttering. Now, I am OCD about stuttering. More OCD than Roach is about input lag, and trust me, that's really next level OCD. Roach for the win, by the way. But getting back on topic, I'm sure I speak for all PC gamers when I say that no one likes stuttering, even if it is the micro kind. Now, how do you eliminate this? Well, stuttering will mainly come from your CPU side, though it can come from the GPU side as well, especially when it comes to memory limitations. So try to make sure your GPU is not near its maximum limit, if you can. Again, using RiverTuner to identify how much GPU memory is being used and looking at the specs of your graphics card to see how much actual memory it has. For instance, the 7970 I used had three gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. And in games I tested, I turned down and sometimes completely off any anti-aliasing settings. As for the CPU side of things, again, turning off and down things like shadows, the distance draw and physics, like bullet impacts, for example, can help greatly in increasing frames and reducing stuttering. Now, the last topic I will go on to here is a benchmark that I really like, and it is a really popular one too, and that's Firestrike. It will give you a physics score, aka a CPU score, and a GPU score. And you should always try to have these so that one isn't too far out of proportion to the other. In the 1440p $174 build that I did, for example, the balance was just about right, with a ratio of 1.6 or 1.7 GPU to one CPU score or physics score. Now the kicker here is that having a higher physics score in proportion to a GPU score is not a bad thing, though it can mean that money hasn't been spent efficiently. But having a GPU score that far outnumbers the CPU score, for example a ratio that is higher than 2 to 1, especially on budget PCs, will generally give you a bad stuttery experience. However, on a higher end 4K gaming rig it will be a different story since the GPU is getting taxed a lot more in proportion to a 1080p gaming rig. Also one more thing to mention is that the Firestrike benchmark does favor hyperthreading quite a bit, but with the way games are going with multi-threaded support I don't see this as a bad thing since CPUs even in the Nalum generation, that's the first generation of i7s, they're still very strong to this date for gaming. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions about tuning or balancing or if you have any tips of your own, then be sure to drop a comment in the comments section below and I'll catch you guys in the next tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.